Brother lads, welcome back to Kosi Zasno Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal. Arsenal have offered Kai Havers a 200,000 deal uh, per week, which he has accepted and he's willing to join uh, the club, according to Fabrizio Romano. We're going to also be diving into what Arsenal are willing to pay, according to the Daily Mail. Arsenal are willing to go as far as 60 million for Kai Havers. In this video, I I want us to talk about the impact of Kai Havers on Emil Smith Rowe and Fabio Vieira as well. We'll be talking about Joao Cancelo because Manchester City have set a deadline. They want to get a solution for Joao Cancelo before uh, July. Now, of course, the fixtures are already out for the next season uh, of the Premier League. Manchester City are starting their preseason very, very soon. They want a solution before preseason for Ka uh, Joao Cancelo and Arsenal must act very, very quickly. Brighton have registered their interest in Emil Smith Pro um, you know, as one of the Premier League, uh, Premier League clubs that are really interested in sign game we cannot give them a mill smith bro they already have joao pedro they already have Cairo mitoma they have julio inciso we cannot give them a mill smith bro it cannot happen they are they are the enemy at the moment but of course hit the like button subscribe to the podcast as well let's get this video to 500 likes first and foremost in the comment section 200,000 for Kai Havers, is it worth it? That is question number one. And question number two, do you think he's better than Emil smith Rowe? I think that's the question that uh, we were trying to talk about yesterday on the breaking story. Um, that is he a 20-goal machine? Now, Mikel Atta wants to play him as, a, a, as an attacking midfielder that much we know. So if he plays at AM... It means that Emil Smith Rowe um, might be affected. Of course, Fabio Vera as well. So, what are your thoughts? What are your opinions on um, Emil Smith Rowe out? Kai Havers in. I mean, let's have the conversation about that in the comment box below. I will be there and I'll be looking at your comments um, definitely. Right, right. So let's dive into the latest. Now, uh, this is this is from, you know, Sammy Mark Bow and the Daily Mail. They've said Arsenal are willing to go up to 60 million for Kai Havers. The player wants the move and talks are ongoing very, very well. Personal terms won't be an issue as reported by Sammy Mark Bow in the Daily Mail. So Arsenal willing to go up to 60 million uh, in this summer for Kai Havers and I'm hearing people saying well Arsenal cannot sign Kai Sedo and Rice because there is a lot of money involved in the deals if we sign Rice and, 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 and Kai Havers that is 160 million right so who says we do not have the money I think this summer Arsenal have the money Arsenal have the financial power all the you know all the reserves that we have been keeping for the last two decades this could be the summer that we unleash that power. This could be the summer that Arsenal unleash that money. And it's going to be very interesting, you know, to see Arsenal go f as high as 60 million for a player like Kai Havers. Listen, we've talked about it yesterday uh, on the breaking story. There is no intention to pay 70 75. There is no intention from Arsenal to pay that. And of course, Fabrizio did, uh, uh, did say that again uh, yesterday in the evening. And he said, Chelsea initially told Arsenal the price for Kai Havers um, uh, you know, is around 70 to 75 million. Chel uh, Arsenal will never pay that money. But from what I understand, sources close to the negotiation believe that it is possible that Kai Havers will, uh, will sign for less than 70 75 so close um says so chelsea could be flexible to make this deal happen the player is keen on the move to us no he knows michelata really really appreciates him but he also uh but 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 also keep an eye on bayern Arsenal no Bayern could be in the race in the next days, uh, but about the uh, but at the moment Arsenal are leading uh, the rest. That is Fabrizio Romano as regards to this deal. He says one, Arsenal never ever are going to pay 70 to 75 uh, to Chelsea. So Chelsea have been told that. Chelsea are very flexible. They will negotiate uh, with Arsenal. They will negotiate with all parties involved to make sure that a consensus can be reached. And Arsenal want to get this deal done before uh, Bayern can actually uh, come in. Fabrizio says Arsenal leading the rest. Now, I don't understand why Fabrizio has to add a, you know, another team to each and every Arsenal deal, right? Bayern have left the Declan Rice deal a long time ago, but he still keeps on reporting that Bayern are really, really there. I think Bayern are not there. And at the moment, according to reports from Germany, 
Pi are not even interested in Kai Harvest. There is no in, there is no concrete interest, um, you know, in 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 Kai Harvest from buying. Yes, Thomas Tuck has worked with them, and I think many of the outlets are using that opportunity to, to go. Oh, Bayern will rival Arsenal. No one is going to rival Arsenal uh, for Kai Harvest because there are not so many clubs that are actually appreciated. Most of the clubs are looking at um, Kai Harvest as a flop at Chelsea, and they're like, well, we don't want anything to do with him. Uh, we, we would rather go and sign other targets, okay? So for me, 60 million, it's quite decent. They signed him at 72. That was in 2020. If in 2023, if we can sign him at 60 million, I think it's such a very, very exciting player. And besides, I've never been one person to think that Arsenal should play with Rice, Partey, and Odegaard in one midfield. I've always thought that if we can get an attacking midfielder, Odegaard as well as... um. As, as, as a deep lying playmaker and then we have a good number 10 a good creative a, a good creative player who's also interested in scoring goals in Kai Havers then you can have your party or Declan Rice you know in midfield so I'm absolutely okay with uh, with the idea of Hiver, Kai Havers you know joining Arsenal I'm absolutely okay uh, with us going for as high as 60 million but this is what I'm skeptical about right so let's dive into this one Arsenal are willing to pay Kai Havers in excess, in excess of 200,000 per week um, to sign uh, for the club, to, to get him to sign for the club. Havers is keen on the move to cross uh, across London. Uh, Arsenal and Chelsea can reach an agreement over, if Arsenal and, uh, and Chelsea can reach an agreement over a transfer fee. Havers is aware of Arsenal's interest. Chelsea are playing hardball over this valuation, uh, over the valuation of Havers and want a minimum of 70 million um, for the forward who has two years left on his contract um, at the moment. Arsenal are hopeful they can strike a deal closer to 60 million, including add-ons okay that is um sammy mark Paul confirming that, that the price is going to be around 60 million including add-ons but the problem i have with this deal is the two hundred thousand per week I, I really really have a problem there and i don't i, I don't think harvest is a bad player I'm, i don't aim to say uh that kai harvest is a bad player maybe uh he doesn't deserve that amount of money to be paid for his signature I think it's a good player so um that's why I've, I've i've said 60 million is all right but 200,000 for kai harvest um is a little bit above uh, you know above i think we should sign him because he wants to join us he looks at us as um a club that are, are going to bring back his form bring back his good old days right i've been listening to the talk talk sport breakfast um you know earlier on this morning and um um i think it was ali mccoist who was saying that um uh, kai havers is a good player he's just being played in the wrong position and tell you what I absolutely agree. I really, really do agree that uh, he's a good player who's been played in a wrong position. He's a very, very good player who's being played out of position. So if we can get him to play, um, if, if we can get him to play in, 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 in his right position, that is attacking midfield, in my opinion, he will be a, a much better player. But 200,000 for me, I kind of feel like this is, um, uh, you know, unnecessary, right? We are doing him a favor, one. To bring him at the Emirates Stadium, we are, we, are, we are doing him a favor to add him to one of the most exciting, you know, projects in the Premier League, okay? We very much know he doesn't want to stay at Chelsea. We very much know that uh, there are not so many clubs interested or m there are not so many clubs that are, are willing to go above 50 million to sign him. So for me, 150,000 would be a very, very good deal. Like, it would be a massively generous deal. For, for Kai Havers, 150,000, you know, per week. But anyway, let's wait and see uh, what's going to happen uh, because also the Declan Rice deal is still a very big determinant um, with sources close to the deal saying that Arsenal have to first find out how much uh, how much West Ham will want up front for um, Declan Rice. So how much we're going to pay up front for Declan Rice will determine how much we are willing to pay up front uh, for Chelsea, uh, you know, for Chelsea's Kai Harvest. How much we are going to pay uh, in terms of fixed payments for, you know, Kai Harvest. And, 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 and in my opinion, this is what I think. I think if Arsenal can pay around 40 million up front for Declan Rice, which I think we will do, which I think is, um, uh, is, is definitely going to happen. 
I think will pay around 40 45 million. Arsenal can then commit to a 55 pound million pound deal uh, for Kai Havers. I think it's it's only fair. It's only fair. And then the uh, the, the other um, you know the other installments can be paid uh, later on. So rise and how much we're gonna pay up front will determine how much Arsenal are willing to put on the table for Kai Havers. That uh, does that then, does that mean that Arsenal um, will have to wait to see if they can pay um, how much they can pay in order to go for Moises Caicedo? In my opinion. Uh, definitely. And with Moises Caicedo, Chelsea also have to, you know, get some sales out of the door. So Mason Mount and Kai Havers being sold could actually facilitate a move uh, for Moises Caicedo from Chelsea, um, according to what I understand. Now, Fabrizio Romano has given us a very big update on Joao Cancelo and the situation uh, regarding the player. Now, he says that at the moment, Manchester City want to find a solution for Joao Cancelo before pre-season games start, as the Portuguese fullback will be available on the market. Discussions will take place as soon as um, as soon as the interest remain uh, as soon as uh, it says uh, di discussions will take place soon as the interest from Barcelona remains strong. Arsenal have also held co uh, contacts on the player's side. So that is Fabrizio Romano on Joao Cancelo. Discussions will take place soon. Interest from Barcelona very strong. Interest from um, uh, interest from Arsenal as well very strong. We have also held contacts on a pre uh, uh, like a primary level. Um, listen. I think with Joao Cancelo, he's one of those dudes that I've talked about and I said, I can see this one happening, right? It's not a, it's, it's not a deal that will happen overnight. It's not a deal that, um, you know, Manchester City will be happy to do with Arsenal. I still think they will listen to Barca, they will listen to Bayern, they will listen to Juventus, and if they don't find a good deal, then they'll go, okay, Arsenal, what are you saying for Joao Cancelo? But I'll tell you this, if Manchester City... And, and this is how genius they are. If Manchester City are going to get 50 million or 45 for Joao Cancelo from Arsenal, and they're going to get 30 from Barcelona, they will sell to Arsenal. I'm really, really sure about that. But what is, I think what this story does, it just sets the ultimatum for Joao Cancelo. It really, really does. Because um, Fabrizio says they want to find a solution before pre-season. Right? So Arsenal have to act quickly. Get Rice out of the way. And after getting Rice out of the way, sign Joao Cancelo next, in my opinion. Cancelo should be the next signing immediately after um, Im immediately after Declan Rice. Because I think Kai Havers will be there. Kai Havers can be done by the end of July. But Cancelo, the ultimate has been set. And we know with Manchester City, they never do late business, right? Look at Arling Haaland and how quickly they did that deal. Look at Ka Ka Calvin Phillips and how quickly they did that deal. Look at the three players or four players they sold and how quickly they did those deals uh, last summer. Lavia, Bazunu, um, Zichenko, Starling, and, and Gabriel Jesus. Quickly, around six, seven deals done very, very quickly. So they mean business when they say, he must be out before preseason, right? So for me, for Arsenal, get your bid in. If it's 35 million and it's the only bid on the table, well, Manchester City will be like, but they're not competing with anyone. How do we convince them to raise their offer? Okay? Uh, look, listen, with Barca, I know what they're trying to do, right? I really, really understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to play uh, cool. They are the smart boy in the smart suit um, with, you know, in, in blazers and everything. But those tricks are no longer working, to be honest. Like, yeah, players do want to play for Barca. But I think the bigger talents are now going to Real Madrid over FC Barcelona. Bellingham, Chuameni, Camavinga, Valverde, um, you know, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo. Uh, look, I think Madrid have a better exciting project to attract talent and players uh, than FC Barcelona. So I'm not afraid of FC Barcelona. Maybe Cancelo would like to play in Spain um, again. Maybe Cancelo would like to be, um, you know, uh, a, a, a part of, you know, a big club like Barcelona. But I still see him as a potential, potential Arsenal signing. I really, really do. But so let's wait and see if Arsenal can make their offer before Manchester City get frustrated. Brighton and Hove have, in, have um, sent in their interest 
to Arsenal to you know in a Mill Smith role. They have registered their interest in the Mill Smith role this summer, and they would like to sign him. So this is the story. Uh, and says Brighton now interested in a Mill Smith role, but Ateta wants to keep him at the side. Uh, Brighton are amongst the Premier League sides who are admirers of the Mill Smith role, but look uh, to set but look for set for disappointment with the youngster set to stay at Arsenal this summer. Smith Pro is contracted to Arsenal until 2026 and is nowhere. Uh, and is now away with um, England's under 21, having uh, having been included in Lee Castley's Young Lions squad of the summer Euros. Kieran, um, uh, this comes in from uh, from the mail as well, the mail online uh, uh, as well. Now, Emil is untouchable, according to Mikel Arteta. But the interest in Kai Havers literally means that he's not untouchable. Like, to be honest, right? I don't think he's untouchable anymore. I don't think it's that kind of treasure that Arsenal are unwilling to sell. I remember when we, uh, when we were battling with Aston Villa, they bought Buendia and they came swooping in uh, to sign a Mill Smith row. Like, ridiculously, very, very brave of them. But right now, I don't think he's untouchable. If Arsenal get in Kai Havers in attacking midfield, Odegaard, in um in deep playmaking playmaking role and Declan Rice in CDM. A Mill Smith Bros future at Arsenal depends on Fabio Vieira not doing well. If Fabio Vieira ever ignites into the player that we believe he will ignite into, and then he becomes that you know everyday backup for Kai Havers and Martin Odegaard. There are going to be big problems for Emil Smith Pro. I don't think he will compete with Gabriel Martinelli and, um, and, and uh, Trossard. And I don't think he's good enough and fit enough to play on that right hand side with Saka. So, Smith Pro, it's a difficult one, in my opinion. It's really, really a difficult one. But however much he might leave, do not give him to Brighton. We cannot give Brighton another player. Like a Mill Smith Rowe. Listen, they have signed Joao Pedro. And anyone might, might look at Brighton as not a threat. Brighton, trust me, are the real enemy. Brighton are the real threat of the Premier League. Trust me, Brighton played Arsenal, won that game 3-0 at the Emirates Stadium comfortably. Just imagine if, the, if you give them a Mill Smith Rowe with Joao Pedro with Julio Enciso, with Facundo Bonanate, they have Evan Ferguson. You can't, we just can't allow it. It just can't happen. Like, just keep Emil Smith bro until 2024. And if it's not worked out, we can sell him to another club, but not Brighton, especially not next season. In the next video, we'll be talking about Arsenal's fixture, uh, fixture list because they are out. And um, we'll see if we can win the first 19 games and then you know fight for the title because that is what we're going to be doing every season fight for the title until we get our hands on the premier league see you soon